What's going on guys, your boy Amazing Kira back with another video and in today's video guys we are doing the PvP and PvE tier list for Grand Cross updated at the end of October. So I'm recording this video a little bit into November here guys, but it's pretty much covering only the characters that came out during October and I wanted to go over all the releases here and uh, talk about them and where I'd actually rank them on the tier list. So if you guys enjoy videos like this man, definitely make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I appreciate all the support on the channel as of late guys, it definitely does mean a lot. And uh, yeah, we're on the road to 50,000 subscribers. So with that out of the way, let's hop in and let's talk about it. So first things first, guys, is that I did update my tier list. So I will link these in the description. If you guys want to do your own tier list, you can look at both of my tier lists. I've, I've updated them completely. So I've made a brand new template here for both the uh, PvP uh, and PvE side of the game. Right now, I have it updated as October 24th. Uh, PvE tier list maker or PvP tier list maker. So obviously you guys can you know check it out if you want to see like a specific character on the list because I might you know kind of brush over it in the video here. Uh, but feel free to just kind of click the link in the description and check the uh, tier list yourself, guys, and see you know where where a character that you're specifically looking at is a uh, ranked. Um, but without the way, man, let's hop in and let's talk with the first character here. Um, let's do it in order of release. So let's start with uh, Percival. Yeah, so we'll start with Percival here and uh, we'll talk about what he's able to do and where we actually rank him on the list. Alrighty guys, so we got the unknown power little hero Percival. Now, in terms of what this character is able to do, guys, let's start with his passive here. So the uh, orchestrator of life, at the start of the battle, recovery factor is applied to applicable allies for one turn, and all the hero stats increase by 5% for each applicable ally participating in the battle. When the hero uses skills two times during the ally's turn, applicable allies gain recovery factor for one turn and have two of their debuffs removed. And in addition, the hero gains one unity strength effect for each uh, surviving applicable ally at the start of the ally's turn. And each strength unity's uh, effect is going to increase allies' defense related stats by 8%. And when there's four or more unity strength effects are removed, the hero gains firm volition um, and limit once as well. And the applicable allies are going to be humans and fairies. The recovery factor is going to be max HP plus 20%. Recovers 50% of the damage taken when taking damage that is 30% uh, of max HP or more. And when this effect is removed from an ally, their damage taken decreases by 40% for one turn. And then for unity strength, we got removes when the hero uses a skill, stacks up to four times. And then we have firm volition here where the hero's damage taken from enemy skills does not exceed 50% of the maximum HP and increases attack related stats by 40% and uh, damage dealt by 80%. So that is going to be Percival's passive. Now moving on to his skills here, guys. We got Tiny Rush, which is going to inflict Ardent Support damage equal to 200% of attack on one enemy. Ardent Support is going to be two times critical chance increase and ignore enemy defense and resistance. And that's going to scale from 200, 300, and 500%. And then moving on to his uh, second skill here, we got Magic Slap, which is going to inflict Pierce damage equal to 100% of attack on all enemies and heals allies by 30% of the damage dealt. This is going to scale up to 150-40% and 250-60% of damage dealt, right? And then moving on to his ultimate here, and this is at 3 out of 6, so obviously, you know, depending on the dupe level, it's going to change. Um, but we have uh, Mini Percival's Go increases all allies hp related stats by 30 percent for two turns and after applying firm volition to the hero for two turns inflicts power strike damage equal to 420 percent of attack to all enemies and if firm volition is active on the hero while the hero is participating in the battle when the hero dies they revive with the same amount of hp they had before dying one time dying from reflective damage does not count in revival but the resurrection count is still consumed and then power strike is going to be additional damage equal to enemy resistance so yeah guys that's going to be personal skill right there let's now talk about where we would actually rank them on the tier list so for this is for what is this pvp okay we got to do a bunch of changes for pvp like right now this is what i had from last month but we're going to change it obviously you know uh considering the new characters that did release uh, but yeah for percival um for the nowadays meta right i do think that he's probably gonna go in the probably the a tier yeah i had humans uh highly rated from last month um uh, but i think i will bump them down a notch i think right now especially i don't think humans are you know uh that dominant of a, of a team right and i think if you had to choose the percivals here you're definitely taking this percival for you know on field um uh, but you have the options right you have uh green percival as an option um, so yeah, so for PvP, we're gonna, you know, bump the human team down a little bit, guys. And we'll obviously have to change the other teams too once we talk about the other characters. Um, but for now, I am gonna bump the human team to A tier, which still is good, you know, sub-meta characters above average. Um, and then you have obviously the top of the meta, which is gonna be the characters that just dominate PvP completely. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, human team is still viable and, uh, you know, you can still win. I think any uh, team, you know, that's in like the A tier sub-meta, you can still win champion one, you know, uh, to get your gems. 
And uh, yeah, that's where I'd rank Percival in the PvP side of the game. Now for PvE, I think Percival is actually fairly solid. I'd probably give him like a B tier for like niche. Like I think he's actually like all right. Um, you can definitely use him in PvP. He's a human character, so he obviously benefits from Roxy, right? You know, you get the single target damage from Roxy. Um, you know, he's uh, I would say he's one of the fastest uh, characters for Bird as well. You know, very very good on that. Um, not necessarily for the floor four, but you know, for floors one to three, if you just want to farm it, you know, Roxy alongside him is pretty good. Um, yeah, other than that though, guys, not too much use out of that. I mean, you know, you still got the other demonic beasts. Like I think he's still good in like school and hottie. I think he's still good in uh, you know in deer and all that. Um, deer to a lesser extent, right? Because you know, obviously on deer you want to have uh, one of each color. Um, and light attribute is not really the greatest because of that, uh, but still, you know, uh, still very viable. And uh, yeah, I, I will give him the B tier here for niche. I think it's still usable in a few PvE modes, but it's not going to be, you know, uh, substantial and like universal in, in content or anything like that. Like it's, it's nothing super crazy. So I am going to give him the B tier right there. Uh, so yeah, let's move on now to Esterosa. Alrighty guys, we got Holy War Nightmare Berserk Astarosa. This is the Halloween character for this year. Let's go over his kid and talk about what he's able to do. So, first commandments, the exact same thing as the blue Astarosa guys. So removes one buff, applies to the hero when the hero uses a skill in PvP, applies to both enemies and allies, and applies when entering battle. Now for his passive, Nightmare is going to apply uh, two Whispering Commandment effects on the hero for two turns at the start of the battle, decreasing applicable allies damage taken by 15% for each Whispering Commandment effect, and if an enemy attacks an applicable ally while uh, while Whispering Commandment is uh, active on the hero, the, attack, uh, the attacker's crit damage decreases by 40%. And every applicable ally's attack increases by 7% for each applicable ally participating in the battle. And all stats of the hero increase by 15% for each Whispering Commandment effect removed. And when all Whispering Commandment effects are removed, all enemies are inflicted with the Darkness Unleashed for 2 turns. And then in terms of the applicable ally, it's going to be Demons or Allies with Commandment. And then Whispering Commandment is going to be immune to all debuffs. And Darkness Unleashed is going to be all stats minus 15%. So yeah guys, uh, Astral is right there in terms of his passive, very good. Uh, moving on to his holy relic, right? This is uh, from also the blue Astros as well. You know, both of them share it. So, uh, depletes one uh, orb from the uh, ultimate moon gauge of all enemies at the end of the turn when an enemy dies from the hero's skill use. So, you know, definitely a, uh, a pretty strong, uh, you know, holy relic right there, especially for this Astrosa. The last one, not necessarily, but this one definitely does benefit from this relic, actually, you know, a fairly good amount. Now, moving on to his first skill, guys, we got Ravenous Bash. Inflicts Gloom damage equal to 180% of attack on one enemy. Um, Gloom is going to be times two critical damage increase. And then damage dealt plus 50% for each Darkness Unleashed on enemies. And it's going to scale from 180 to 270 and 450, respectively. And then moving on to his AoE skill, we got Living Graveyard. Inflicts Pierce damage equal to 100% of attack on all enemies. And Pierce is going to be triply Pierce rate increase for your substat. And this is going to scale from 100, 150, and 250%, respectively. And then moving on to his ultimate here, guys. Same ultimate as the blue Asterosa, the blue uh, festival one. Um, yeah, so this is a 2 out of 6 dupe level as well. So obviously this will change depending on the dupe level. Um, but decreases all enemies attack by 20% for 3 turns. Then inflicts resonance damage equal to 418% of attack on all enemies. Resonance is going to be 10% damage dealt for every buff, debuff, and stance on the target. So yeah, guys, now where are we actually going to rank uh, Asterosa on the tier list? Um, in terms of PvP... Asterosa gotta go very very high man i think demons are still in the meta i don't think they're the strongest team in the game anymore but i definitely would say uh this Asterosa is very very meta guys let's move uh, assault melee down because i don't think you really run assault melee alongside him um usually the team that i've seen a lot being used is uh Asterosa, melee and then like demiurge or like gelda right um that's usually the the meta team at least from what i've seen for pvp uh, but yeah, just a very, very strong core of characters, you know, Astrosa right there. And his kid is very, very synergistic, guys. Like, a lot of people, like, don't know how good his kid actually, like, is. But if you look at his passive, it works so well alongside the commandment, right? You know, you're removing one buff from the hero, and the Whispering Commandment is a buff. And look what happens when you remove it. All stats of the hero increase for each uh, Whispering Commandment effect removed. So you get 30% all stats for this Astrosa. You do a ton of damage, and you're applying Darkness Unleashed, so... Yeah, I mean, overall, I would say this character is very, very good, guys, in, in terms of the ranking, right? I, I'm going to give him uh, top of the tier, especially with how strong demons are in the meta right now. Like, they're still very, very good. And, uh, yeah, I would say they're probably the second best team in PvP right now. Yeah, considering uh, what the meta is kind of looking like, probably second best team, yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, we'll move uh, Meliodas back there, and also I'm gonna move down the Seven Deadly Sins team as well because I think they have taken um, a little bit of a backseat. Meli can stay, uh, but Liz can uh, can take a backseat as well. And then moving on to the PVE side of the game, guys. I think Esrosa is all right, and you know, obviously he can still get his uh, you know his all stats and all that. Um, Whispering, uh, Whispering Commandment is a blue buff. He's able to remove that, um, you know, uh, naturally, right? Uh, he won't be able to do it because of his uh, commandment, though, because of the fact that it is a uh, PvP exclusive commandment. But yeah, if I had to rank him, probably B tier. Same with Percival. It's like you could probably use him in in Demonic Beast and stuff, like or maybe even with the same as the Blue Esther. So like, where's Blue Esther? So I think I think I put him down here, right? Um, yeah, because I think yeah, ex yeah, exactly. So. Blue Astrosa, I think it would probably be in the same spot uh, as the red one for PvE content. Like, he, he's still good. Um, but you just can't really, like, utilize the commandment as much as you would in, like, PvP, right? PvP, it's a lot easier to get off. In PvE, it's a little bit a little bit tough. So, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of just depends. But he's still good, though. No? And I'm not going to, like, take that away from him. Like, he's he's more of, like, a PvP character, though, guys. That's kind of the difference here. Is that, like, these two Astrosas, like, when they were made... Uh, definitely more made for PvP than PvE side of the game. So there you guys go. Let's move on now to the next character being uh, Walusheon. Walusheon first, and then we'll, we'll talk about the LRs. Alrighty, guys. So we got Demon Lord Secretary Shion here from the Slime Collaboration Part 3. Now for her passive here, number one secretary. At the start of the battle in PvE, the hero gains rapid regeneration and battle god's uh, power. For each ally participating in the battle, the hero's basic stats increase by 5%, and ally's damage taken decreases by 7%. When an ally uses a single target attack skill, the hero's attack related stats increase by 5%, up to a maximum of 25%. And when allies use single target attacks 3 times in, in one turn, all allies' critical chance increases by 30%, and their critical damage increases by 50% for 2 turns. Now, rapid regeneration is going to be for uh, every 1% of diminished HP on the hero. Allies uh, regenerate with a 2% regeneration rate uh, increase at the start of the ally's turn. And the hero accumulates up to 100,000 of the HP restored with rapid regeneration. And then Battle God's power is going to increase allies' uh, attack by 10% of the accumulated points at the start of the ally's turn as well. So, you know, you do get that buff as well, guys. So, alright, moving on to her Holy Relic. Um, you know, the effect is going to be remove two debuffs from each ally when allies use three single target attacks in one turn in PvE. So, you know, definitely very strong and, and very synergistic alongside the, you know, the crit chance, crit damage from the three single targets. Now, moving on to her skills, we got Amplify Single Target. This is going to inflict uh, Amplify damage equal to 180% of attack on one enemy, which is damage dealt 30% per active buff on self. It's going to scale from 180 to 70 and 450% of attack respectively. Now moving on to her second skill, we got uh, Power Strike Damage, which is going to be at 190%, uh, 285, and 475. And the Power Strike Effect is going to be additional damage equal to enemy resistance. And then moving on to our ultimate here, guys, Maximum Magic Bullet. And one thing to mention with this ultimate as well, guys, is that the basic stat amount does not change. The only thing changing with the dupe levels is the actual damage effect on the ult itself. But it's going to increase basic stats by 50% for 3 turns and inflicts damage equal to 588% of attack to one enemy. Alrighty guys, now where am I going to rank Xion on the tier list? Let's talk PvE because I think that's where we're really going to be able to, uh, you know, kind of put Xion in a good spot. And for Xion, A tier uh, for me. I think she is uh, universal in a lot of PvE content. She's great in uh, the Demon King. She's really good in Demonic Beast. And honestly, I, I could actually see the argument of putting her in the S tier uh in the s tier bracket and i'm, I'm kind of thinking about it right now like do i want to put her in s tier because she is really good you can do route with her you can do uh nidog you can do all the uh demonic piece you can do floor four bird i got to actually now that i think about it actually i do got to yeah guys i think i actually do give her the s tier you, you think about it right like you're you're gonna use Xion in pretty much everything pve uh related right we're talking like you know uh late game demonic beast we're talking uh demon king fight she's still great for that um you know we're talking like pretty much everything that's pve in the game that is difficult she is good in so yeah no actually i will give her the s tier actually now nah, i think about that yeah i actually am gonna go with the s tier right there for Xion in pve and then in the uh, pvp side of the game guys i mean this is a given she is a pve character so not viable in pvp at all um you're not really going to be using her in that type of content um but again you know very very strong in the pve side of the game so moving on now guys let's talk about uh we'll talk about lr rimru first and then we'll move on to uh millim right there 
All right, guys, so moving on to Octogram, Demon Lord, Rimuru, Tempest. So for his passive here, guys, Silent Wrath. At the start of the Allies' turn, the hero's basic stats increased by 8%. One buff are removed uh, from each enemy. Uh, then the hero's basic stats actually increased by 8% for each buff removed. And if they reach the max uh, maximum increase, the hero's pierce rate increases by uh, once by 140% uh, for three turns. And basic stat increase effects stack up to five times. And this is going to be pretty much used in everything, excluding uh, deathmatch content, guys. So, yeah, very good. And then moving on to his Holy Relic here, increases the hero's pierce rate by 80% just outright, uh, which is definitely going to be good. Moving on to his first skill here, we got Pierce Single Target. It's going to inflict pierce damage equal to 200% of attack on one enemy. And pierce is going to be triple the pierce rate increase for your substat. So we do, uh, we do 200%, 300%, and 500% respectively on the uh, ranks right there. Now moving on to the uh, second skill, guys, we got uh, Belzebuth, which is going to inflict uh, flood damage equal to 110% of attack on all enemies, and it infect them for one turn. And the uh, flood is obviously going to be 0.8% additional damage for every percent of remaining HP on self, and it in fact is going to restrict recovery related stats as well, and it's going to scale from 110 to 180 to 280 and two turns uh, on the infect right there. And then moving on to his ultimate here, guys, and this is at 6 out of 6, so, you know, this is going to vary depending on the dupe level, but this is an Abyss ultimate. So, uh, uh, max level Megiddo, inflicts damage equal to 450% of attack on all enemies, gain the Abyss effect, and decreases damage taken by 50% for 2 turns. Abyss is going to inflict additional damage equal to 60% of the damage dealt on all enemies at the start of the enemy's turn, and only applies the Abyss effect on the last, uh, of the last hero used. Yeah, so that's pretty much how the uh, ultimate's going to work. Alright guys, now where are we actually going to rank LR Rimuru on the tier list now? For PvP, I think Rimuru uh, is going to slot in a fairly uh, safe spot in the A tier. I think he's really good CC. You know, he's going to have a pretty strong AoE, obviously, for the Infect. Um, I don't think he really got too much on his LR. I think that's, like, the main thing that people kind of notice. Like, he's still going to be all right in PvP and, you know, more as, like, a supportive character uh, kind of, right? Like, not necessarily, like, a main DPS character, but definitely more of a support. And I think with that, like, he's still definitely valuable. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, still going to be a, a sub-meta character. You know, he's still very usable in the meta. Um, and you can definitely run him, especially when we talk about, you know, LR Milam with the unknown team. Like, I think that's going to be very good. Uh, but overall, I think he definitely would fit the A tier. Like, he's not touching the demon team. And, uh, yeah, he just didn't get uh, uh, as much of a buff, guys. Like, honestly, people could definitely argue him being even here. Uh, but I'll definitely give him in uh, the A tier level of strength. Like, he's still good. Uh, just, you know, could have definitely got, like, a lot more. Um, he's just a little bit lacking in, in, you know, in changes done to his kit. And then moving on to PvE, guys. I think LR Burmaru in terms of PvE, I think he's alright. I mean, very niche. It's like, it's really, really the same thing here. Like, I don't know where I'd really rank the character considering, uh, you know, he's probably on the same level as, like, Milim for PvE. I, and we talked about it as well on my, you know, my ranking list as well. Like, I have Milim, like, fairly good in PvE content. Like, mainly for, like, deer and stuff. So, I'll probably rank him alongside Milim. Um, and, and, and I might even move Milim up to B, actually. We might just do that. Because I think Milim for, like, you know, most PvE, uh, demonic piece, like, she's actually strong. Um, so yeah, I, actually, I think I will do that. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put her in the B tier alongside Rimuru. I think both of them are pretty good. And they're probably about the same level in PvE. I, d I definitely do think Milim, uh, is more tailored to PvE than, than Rimuru. Because, you know, you can't really get his infect off and stuff. But, yeah, I mean, uh, definitely a, uh, a fairly good PvE character, guys. Alright, let's move on now to the final character being LR Milim, guys. And where we're gonna rank her on the tier list. Alright guys, so we are now on Proven Power, Milim Nava. Let's talk about her kit, and then where we're going to rank her on the tier list. So for her passive here, Supreme Power, at the start of the battle, applies 2 stacks of Dragon Power on the hero, then Dragon Protection for 3 turns, increases allies defense related stats by 20% for each stack of Dragon Power on self, 1 instance of Dragon Power is removed each time an ally uses a skill, or this hero takes damage from an enemy's skill uh, used on the enemy's turn, and additionally, all stats of the hero increase by 7% each time a stack of Dragon's Power is lost, up to a maximum of 28%. And once all instances are removed, Dragon's Rage is applied to the hero for 3 turns. And when Dragon's Rage expires, 2 stacks of the Dragon's Power are applied to the hero once again. So Dragon's Protection is going to be allies damage taken from all target attacks are going to be minus 40%. The hero becomes immune to stat decrease effects as well. Um, Dragon Power is going to apply Dragon Rage on self once all stacks are removed. 
and then Dragon's Rage is going to give you attack related stats plus 40% and ignore 100% of the target's critical resistance and inflicts additional damage equal to 40% of the final damage when using all target attack skills except ultimate moves. So very, very good on her passive right there. Moving on to her Holy Relic. When using a skill, it always deals damage as if it has a attribute advantage regardless of the target's attribute. So just straight up, uh, you know, attribute advantage across the board. Um, for her first skill here, we got Heavenly Demon uh, Slash. So it's going to inflict Obliteration damage equal to 200% of attack on one enemy. Obliteration is going to be uh, triple the pierce rate increase and ignore enemy defense. Upon skill use, crit chance plus 50% per each stack of dragon power on self. And damage dealt increases by 30% for each stack of dragon's power on self as well. It's going to scale from 200%, 300%, and 500% respectively. And then moving on to her second skill here, we got uh, Tyrant's Roar, which is going to inflict Raging Gale damage equal to 100% of attack on all enemies. Raging Gale is going to be 2 times critical damage and ignore enemy resistance. And skill damage dealt plus 50% if the Dragon uh, dragon Rage effect is active on self. It's going to be 100, 150, and 250% of attack right there. Now moving on to our ultimate here guys, and this is at the 2 out of 6 dupe level. So this is going to vary depending obviously on the dupes, but Dragon Nova, right, uh, Drago Nova right here. Uh, removes all dragon power from the hero and applies dragon rage on the hero for three turns then inflicts raging guild damage equal to 385 percent of attack on all enemies while the hero is in the battle if an ally hero dies due to an enemy skill used during the enemy's turn or if an enemy hero dies due to the effects of this hero's skill the hero gains one stack of dragon's rampage for each fallen hero up to a maximum of four stacks and this effect can last uh three turns now, uh, Raging Gale is going to be obviously times 2 critical damage increase and ignore enemy resistance. Seal damage plus 50% if the Dragon's Rage effect is active on the hero. And a Dragon's Rampage is going to be single target uh, skill damage plus 50%. And additional damage equal to 40% uh, of the target's uh, increased HP, which does not stack. And sets all incoming damage from attacks during the enemy's turn to 1. And the stack count decreases by 1 each time the hero uses a skill. Or this hero takes damage from an enemy skill use on the enemy's turn. Alright guys, so where are we going to be ranking Milam on the tier list for both PvE and PvP? So, we'll talk uh, PvP first. I mean, guys, she is the best, uh, literally best unit in the game right now. Um, talking PvP, uh, you know, standards, right? Definitely the strongest character in the game. Um, if, if we're talking like team use for her, I think uh, we can move up Thor, we can move up Sobnok, and uh, who else we move up? We move up Gother. Because um, this is like the very flexible thing about Milim is you can pretty much run her on like any type of unknown variant. And another thing too is that she's not restricted to specifically unknown. So you could actually run her on like a Demiurge uh, Gelda team, which is like more demon centered, even though they are still unknowns, you can still run something like that and it would still be a very strong team. So right now, unknowns is the number one team in the game. You go first to Milim, you do the, uh, you know, the single target, you do the AOE. Pretty much everyone dies guys like this character is just absolutely absurd and uh in terms of pvp content i mean she's gonna be the number one in the game right now i mean it's you know barring pretty much nobody i mean astros is really good but not close to, to milim in terms of strength and even dk melly like he's still very good but uh yeah i mean milim is just untouched right now guys just it's super insane right now you know um yeah, I think, like, Tyr is definitely, like, really viable. Uh, again, LR Rimru is really viable alongside her. Uh, Camilla can be a pretty good backland as well if you want more of, like, a damage, uh, you know, team right there. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, she's definitely the best character in PvP. I mean, that's that's, well, that's all I can really say right there, right? I mean, you guys kind of get it. Uh, but yeah, that's where I'm going to rank Milim right there. And I think the two, pe uh, two best teams in PvP right now are going to be the uh, Unknown team and then also the Demon team as well. And then from there, it's kind of like Human and, and Sin. And, and uh, yeah, it's kind of just like mixed up from that point on. But uh, yeah, and then obviously you have like other unknown characters you can slot in. Um, but yeah, very, very good character, guys. I mean, it's just absolutely insane what she's able to do. And in terms of PvE content, guys, I'm going to give her the A tier, solid A tier. Um, she is very good in pretty much everything. Um, she's not as good as Xion. Like, you can't run her in, like, the, you know, Rats Oscar Demonic Beast or anything like that. But, like, she's still, like, really, really good. Across, like, the rest of the Demonic Beast, like, she's really good on them. Um, Demon King, I didn't really get to test out, but I assume she's good on that, too. Um, yeah, overall, she's just a really good character, you know, um, across the board. So, yeah, I mean, universal in most content or made for Demonic Beast, which is exactly what she's able to do. So, yeah, guys, that is pretty much the tier list right there. Again, I'm going to link this in the description if you guys want to see my, you know, tier list post uh, the actual video itself. You guys can look at, like, specific characters and where I actually rank them. And again, guys, like, you know, this is a general ranking. This is not necessarily, like, a ranking in the list. So, like, Milim being at the bottom here or the top does not matter. It's just a general ranking in the tier. 
and it's not actually ranked based on the characters in the tier. Maybe maybe this tier, like this tier is fair, like you could say uh, Milim's number one here, but like everything here is like not uh, ranked at all, guys. Like this is just kind of just here, right? I would not say that this is like any anywhere ranked or anything like that. So uh, yeah, just take that into account. Now with that out of the way, guys, that's going to be it for the video. I hope you guys did enjoy, man. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out, and have a great rest of your day, guys. See you later, man.